it's ready. Okay, welcome everyone to the ALG Featured Speaker Series. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you're watching the recording, thank you for watching. Today, we're gonna to be hearing from uh, Bonhi Nandi, Kimberly Subak, I apologize for the mispronunciation, and Elizabeth Fleming at Georgia Highlands College on their introduction to medical microbiology ancillary materials. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end of the session. So if you guys are ready, the floor is yours. Okay, so hi everyone. I am Bunhi Nandi, Assistant Professor, Professor of Biology, School of STEM, Georgia Highlands College. And I am the project lead for uh, this uh, microbiology, uh, biology 2161 ancillary, lab ancillary material. And hi everyone, um, I am in real life, I am an Elizabeth, but I usually go by Betsy. Um, I've been a librarian here at Georgia Highlands College for almost 10 years now. Hi everyone, I'm Kim Subach and I too am an, uh, a professor of biology at Georgia Highlands College. I've been teaching biology here for about eight years. Um, so we've got a lot of biology background here on the, on the med micro grant. <laughs> Bonnie, did you want to handle why we got started? Okay. Yeah, so um, why we started. Basically, this project um, uh, went for fall 2020 to fall 2021. Before that time period, we really did not have a um, nice, good uh, lab manual. We, we, we had a lab manual that was created a long time ago. I think it was uh, round nine uh, LG grant. So it was, it was pretty old. Uh, some of the techniques, uh, procedures, we really need to change that that was not uh, required for the course anymore. And uh, there were uh, some of the exercises that we had to add uh, because of the requirements of nursing schools or dental hygiene. So um, we really had to change uh, that lab manual. Uh, we had to revise the lab manual. Um, so basically we introduced few new techniques, procedures. We took out few old techniques. Uh, we had to revise some of the uh, lab uh, pictures, photos. Um, we had to uh, uh, actually, um, we, we, we really need to change um, the arrangement of the lab manual. Uh, so basically, um, uh, organization and flow of the manual um, was needed to be recreate. So that was one purpose we, we made. No, Bet Betsy, could you please go back? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, so that 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 was the purpose. Um, uh, we, we had to work on the lab manual. Uh, then um, we, we tried to make um, our uh, uh, ancillary material like PowerPoint uh, for lab uh, all the lab exercises and uh, it's, it's both for student and the teachers uh, so that students can go over beforehand like what are the procedure um, uh, and uh, how uh, they are going to be you know uh, work on that everything all the detailed theory theoretical information of that lab procedures and techniques everything um, uh, was very important to add. Uh, so that's why we, we made that uh, PowerPoint and, uh, you know, for the lab exercises. Um, quizzes, um, pre-lab quizzes, we thought that um, to provide uh, better knowledge and um, it is microbiology, so student needs to be prepared uh, 
properly. So we made all the 16 uh, lab exercises prequises. So basically our intention was like, um, when we step in the lab, everything is ready um, for the teacher and for the students. And um, because of that, we started this project. So, yeah, um, as I told, could you please go uh, forward? Yeah. Um, okay. So our grant goals, uh, like um, what uh, what we wanted to do, um, and how we uh, wanted to do. So our first target was update the existing lab manual document. Okay. Then second, sixteen lab preparatory manual. Um, uh, for lab coordinator and lab assistants um, so that, uh, you know, when you step in to the lab, everything is ready. Stu uh, students' desk, teacher's desk, everything should be ready with all the uh, equipment supplies. So that was very important because uh, during that time, you know, it used to take long period of time to uh, prep the lab. Um, and and uh, uh, beforehand, professors, uh, they had to communicate with the lab coordinator, like what we need, what um, students need. Um, and every semester, that conversation need to go on. So we thought that instead of uh, continue to do that, if we make one lab prep manual, uh, then, um, uh, you know, like we, we all should be on one page and uh, every semester we don't have to spend that extra time and we can save time. So that was the purpose of uh, making that uh, lab preparatory manual. Um, Pre-lab quizzes, um, um, as I told that, uh, uh, you know, background knowledge is, was very important for the student because it is a microbiology lab and uh, saving time also is very important. So um, pre-lab quizzes uh, were very much required that time. Um, lab exercises PowerPoint to support the instruction during the each lab exercises to, again, to support our student knowledge. Over to Kim. All right. Um, so we can see here, we uploaded all of our files, well, most of our files, I'll explain, um, to the LibGuide. So our LibGuide for MedMicro has both the lecture and the lab materials on it. Um, and this is available to everyone. It is, is a public LibGuide um, where we can share our materials. And so on the left-hand side, you can see the menu. And the menu is going to have the lecture materials up top. And so we have the OpenStax textbook is the backbone of our lecture materials. It's the OpenStax textbook, and it's divided into the 26 chapters. And so we have it set out like that in our um, LibGuide. And then underneath the lecture materials and its 26 chapters are the lab materials. And so the lab materials we have broken down into um, the materials for the instructor and the prep and then the materials for the student, um, the lab manual and those PowerPoints too. So we have the menu open for the lab manual right now. And you can see that we have the lab teaching information and it is going to have the lab manual is the very first thing is a lab manual and you can download all of these files off of there. So the lab manual is a Word document. It's a pretty hefty size file, um, but it fits up there. <laughs> and then you can see the PowerPoints for each lab exercise um, also in there. So we have 16 lab exercises in this lab manual that you can download those lab exercise PowerPoints and they all align with um, each one of the exercises that we have in, um, in that LibGuide. And then Sorry, here's an example. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so um, if we wanted to talk about an example, yeah, we can see that we have, what do we have, lab two there? It disappeared. All right. <laughs> here it goes. Um, Woohoo! Okay, lab two is microscopy. So that is where we were going to show the students, you know, this is a microscope because um, our students should have some sort of science background um, before they get to med micro. Um, usually our students will have either bare minimum of biology or chemistry 
before they get to us. But some of my students are just chemistry and they've never done bio, intro bio, any of that. And they come straight into med micro. So we definitely want to go over the parts of a microscope since we will absolutely be using this the entire semester. Um, so we have all the parts of a microscope in here and we demonstrate this throughout the class too, but it helps to have the PowerPoints to go to so we can see, you know, the different types of magnifications and the objective lenses and all of that stuff and how they can calculate um, total magnification, um, how to focus it, where are the different pieces where you can focus it, how do you play with the condenser and the light, um, all of that is in there, how to take care of your scope and, and how to clean it. Cleaning is important. We don't want you sticking your, your eyes right up on a dirty microscope, right? Um, so all of that good stuff is in here. Um, how to focus is a multi-step process in here. And that is, I feel like, one of the areas where the students struggle the most. They've got their slide on there. They thought they knew what they were looking at. They thought they were focused in on it. And um, it turns out that it was a scratch or a bubble or a piece of dust. Um, and so how to focus is key once they've got that skill down were golden um, for the rest of the lab. So these PowerPoints are really great, helpful. Um, I upload them into our learning management system. And so all of my classes can download these exercise PowerPoints for their own reference later on. Because in lab, not only do we do the lab exercises every week, but we also have a skills midterm. And then at the very end, we have a lab final going over all the content in lab. So they will absolutely use these PowerPoints. They're really helpful, really great information. Um, for them to study in preparation for those upcoming skills tests and the lab, the lab final at the very, very end that covers all the content that we did all semester. Um, so those lab exercises are amazing. Um, where are we on our speech? We also have oh, here and then we have screenshots. Um, and did you all want to talk about some of the updates you did with imagery? Yeah, I mean, we can show the um, update that we had. I think it was for lab four. Um, it's just one example that we had in our um, document um, that shows that we were talking about the media. For example, lab four, I think, was our um, broth to broth transfers, talking about sterile transfers and techniques and then how they grow in the material and how you can use that to identify the bacteria. So we updated some of the photographs that we had in the lab manual. Um, and so we had a photograph of um, I think it was a facultative anaerobe that we have a picture of. And so we added in that picture. And then we also pulled in the picture from the OpenStax textbook that has all the different growth um, in the tubes to compare that to. So we have the ones of pictures of media that we use in our lab and bacteria that grow in it in our lab that we like to compare to the one that covers all the different growths um, from this textbook. So we, in the um, Lab you know, that's just one example of things that we updated. We added in a picture of real life photograph from the lab, and then we added in a textbook picture that aligns with that from OpenStax to compare the two growth um, within the lab manual. Um, we also did that throughout the whole thing, but that's just one example of updating the lab manual that we did for our 16 um, different exercises found in that lab manual. Also, uh, Kim, I hope you remember that, like um, that uh, serial dilution we we used to um, uh, do with water. Then we added the milk microbiology, so we had to include that too inside that lab manual. Yes, yes. Um, so we had lots of different changes um, to the lab manual, and all of our materials and everything bounce off that lab manual, the, the Word document is our core of the lab manual, and then everything else is based off of that, that lab manual. So our, each of our PowerPoints for prep and for um, our, la our PowerPoint exercises go along hand in hand with those. Um, we also have, I'm not quite sure where we are on our- um, Oh, we're on pre-lab quizzes. Pre quizzes. Yay, okay. So on pre-lab quizzes, I could show y'all one. Will it allow me to share? I don't know if it allow me to share or not. It might. Uh, are you able to share, Kimberly? Do I need to fix your settings? It may be on me. But you should be able to. Well, it's acting like it's going to be privacy settings. If you click that open share tray, I think. Oh, come on. Got it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, do you have the share button? Are you, are you in the web version or the um, or the app? I am in the app. Let's see if it'll let me now. I just click the button. Should should be working. Are you on a Mac? I am. I am okay. Mac there. likes to give us problems. <laughs> <laughs> I think I found one. Oh, there you go. We can see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so y'all can see the um, aseptic bacterial transfer pre lab quiz for. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So I like to have all the students um, before they walk into class, because in the past um, I didn't do pre lab quizzes and I would have to just, just walk in the door and they had no idea what was going on. Um, and I want them to be prepared in their knowledge so that the instruction portion of the lab doesn't take the entire time. <laughs> um, I want to highlight and show the, you know, the really meat of what we need to do. So having them walk in with a beginner idea of what's expected and what they're coming in on was really helpful. So I've got some questions in our pre-lab quizzes. Um, every pre-lab quiz is 10 questions. And they vary. Some are true false, like we've got here. Some are multiple choice. Multiple choice is usually my go to. Um, but we've got true false ones. Um, sometimes I have, you know, select all that apply. I may have. Oh, I we're, we're getting some feedback. Um, anyone who's uh, it, when when one person's speaking, do you guys mind turning off the mics of those who are not? OK, go ahead. OK. Um, so we have the oh, yeah, here's one that is select all that apply. Um, just questions on, you know, what is the lab covering? What are the important information? The pre lab quizzes allow them to focus on things that I, I feel are important concepts that they need to know. Um, what should you put on your your tube or your plate? You know, what are the different types of growth? that they have out there, those are going to be questions later on that they need to know. So the pre-lab quizzes, as long as they've got their lab manual with them, they should be able to answer all of these. These should be um, really easy questions um, on the pre-lab quizzes. They are designed not to harm their grade. I do not want these things to harm the student's grade in any way. I want them to just allow them to be prepared as they walk into class and understand basics. Um, so these questions are pulling straight from that lab manual on the Word document that we were just talking about. And so with using these, overall, the students came in, they knew they knew what to expect. They knew what they were walking in the door for, and scores on these actually were, were really pretty good. Um, I don't know how to bounce back to our presentation that Betsy is controlling. How do I do that? Let me see if I can you see the PowerPoint? There it is. Yay. OK, so um, on our classes, ours at Georgia Highlands College can run anywhere from a full semester of 16 weeks to a uh, half semester of eight weeks. Um, so summertime would be eight weeks, for example. So I had an eight week class this spring um, from January to March. And on our I just pulled the information from that class that I just had. So we ran through all 16 exercises. Um, every exercise except for it is lab 11 where we do the environment, um, which is a really fun one, but there's not a whole lot of material I could run 10 questions on. So there's not a pre-lab question, a pre-lab quiz on lab 11. So we have 15 pre-lab quizzes here on this PowerPoint. Um, and you can see overall scores out of, it was a relatively small class. I only had like 12 students, but <laughs> out of the 12 students, you can see their scores out of 10 were relatively high. We had an occasional eight. Um, but scores ranged anywhere from eight to, you know, 9.9 .9, um, on their pre-lab quizzes. So overall, the quizzes helped them prepare for class. It did not harm their grades, um, but it allowed them to, you know, get an idea of what's to come before you walk in, and it helped prepare them for the lab midterm and the lab final at the very end. So overall, my scores were pretty good. Um, I believe Bonnie also had an eight-week, and she also has a 16-week class. Too. Oh, there's our little pre-lab quiz thing on there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
Yes, I, I see huge improvement to the student, you know, like um, previously when we did not have that lab quizzes, pre-lab quizzes, uh, students were unprepared and they don't know like what they are going to do actually. But after we started, um, you know, using these pre-lab quizzes, uh, they were well prepared. Uh, they know like what they are going to do, what are the steps um, uh, for the, uh, each steps, how long time it should take. So everything, they, basically they were, they were well prepared for the lab and we, we forced them actually by uh, applying these pre-lab quizzes uh, to read the lab manual, uh, lab ancillary PowerPoint. So, um, Basically, they, they were well prepared. So these, these pre-lab quizzes had tremendous impact on our students. Alrighty. And while we were, so while we're looking at um, some stats, I thought I'd pull, um, since the our lab is based in some library software called Springshare or Library Guides, um, we have some of that set up in both um, statistics from Springshare and Library Guides, but also um, from uh, we have it set up in Google Analytics, and I always think this is interesting to see because it it tells you uh, about the behavior of the students and you know the lab coordinators would be looking at um, the, the page two. So this is the page views of the lab ma manual um, just for April of this semester as a little snapshot and you can see the spikes are sort of right when labs happen or right before labs happen. So I think Bonnie Hill's labs are, are Monday and Wednesday. And so you see these spikes here sort of right on Sunday. And then Kim, your labs were on Tuesday, Thursday, right? So you're seeing um, um, spikes right as students are coming in or right as sort of, you know, lab co um, coordinators are, you know, throughout the week or, you know, starting to set up classes. Um, so to me, it's showing that students and everybody are, are actually using um, the material created and presented. Um, and then here's a thought, was there? Oh, and then here's a student thought about the lab exercises, um, about the PowerPoints. And then here, um, this is the micro medical microbiology guide overall, and this is from September 2020 to April 22. So you can kind of see the dip here, um, you know, with the pandemic. But overall, it, the peaks and peaks and valleys align with the semesters, and you know, May or semester is over right here. Um, but you can see on the whole, our growth and of use for the guide as a whole is growing. And then I didn't know if you wanted to talk about this, Kim. Um, yeah, that's uh, one of my student surveys um, that we put out there because we always want to get feedback, right, from the students. Did they use the material? Did they like it? Um, was it a total waste of time? And I hope it wasn't. And so it was really great to get some feedback. I had no idea which student this was, um, but they put that in their survey that they were really helpful, that they liked the, the lab exercises. Um, and everything that, the, that they enjoyed using those materials, downloading them and using them to study for the upcoming tests and everything. So overall, um, I got some positive feedback from the students when we were using these materials. Um, and I hope everyone else does too. I hope they're useful for everyone else. All right, so we'll look at that slide one more time. And then in case we had um, some technical difficulties, here's another exer another sample of our PowerPoints. Yeah, I can pull that one up too if we want to look at one of one of them in detail. Um, but we have lab exercise PowerPoints we were talking about. So we did the pre-lab quizzes and then the students walk in and we do the lab. And so to go hand in hand with the lab as we are talking about the lab, the students have their lab manuals with them. I ask them to print off their lab manuals and that's their instructions. So they bring those with them and they are running through the lab exercise on the lab manual. And then the instructor, Bonnie and I have these behind us and we go through the PowerPoints during our instruction portion of the lab as we are demonstrating everything. Um, so I've got one of these, yeah, there it is. Um, and I'll stop sharing. Okay. Where did it go? Lab for I want to say. Yeah, let me show you. Here it goes. Okay. 
Why won't you let me pull up my PowerPoints? It's not letting me find PowerPoints on my thing. Maybe this is what Tiffany was talking about, how it was trying are, to be a own beast. So are you um, are you trying to upload your PowerPoint into Teams or just open screen share with your PowerPoint? Just screen share with my PowerPoint. Walk me through, Tiffany. <laughs> um, is, so do you have PowerPoint opened up on your screen? I do, I do. It should just let you share the same way that you did before, because um, you were just sharing the screen, right? Um, you showed the website file so I went to um, share and it has screen and then it has a window so I can just do screen I was trying to do the window option just yeah I would just do screen unless you have something that you don't want to show but it that'll be the easiest option is to show your screen okay sounds good I'm gonna do that then yeah and then you can just close anything that's in the way are we able to see that? Yep. Yeah. Yay. Okay, awesome. Um, so lab four, I think was the one that we did the pre-lab quiz on. So now we have the lab exercise PowerPoints. And we've got, you know, our picture here of Bonnie uh, showing us how it's done. Um, and we talk about what is, you know, aseptic technique. Why do we want to do it? Um, sterile versus aseptic. We talk about the different types of media because sometimes we may be doing broth to broth. Sometimes we're doing plate to plate. Um, so we different definitely talk about the different types of media. So we got our three forms, um, more information on the media, lots of stuff on the media, um, stock and pure culture. Yes, some of the students will get their terminology mixed up. What's the stock um, culture? What's you know? What's my blank? What what am I handling? Um, so we always like to go over the different terms. We have the materials that we need. And if we're doing a broth to broth, so we've got the steps. The steps are also in the lab manual that they are following at their desk. Um, but it's nice to have the PowerPoints up here with the steps too. So we've got steps going on. How do you hold it? And then instead of just words, we also have photographs that show you exactly what we're talking about when we're telling you where to hold it and where to place the stock and the sterile tube and how to hold them in your hand. Um, We've got pictures on on Bonnie showing everyone how to open it and how to hold the caps so you don't set them down and you have them ready um, to cover them right back up as soon as you've transferred. So these are really helpful in-depth instructions to supplement the lab manual um, exercise that they've got for them at their desk. So we've got solid to liquid. And then we've got, you know, just tips and tricks. Definitely make sure that when you flame your loop that it turns orange. Um, we don't have the open flames. We have back incinerators, but we still, you know, same same thing. Doesn't matter what you're using. Make sure that you have sterilized your loop um, and make sure that it cools. All of that good stuff. We don't want to aerosol our bacteria. So we have the things to remember in there, too. So these are just really helpful. Um, sometimes we'll have photographs like we have here. Sometimes we'll have drawings. In the PowerPoint, Bonnie did a really great job. Bonnie made all of these. Um, I only contributed to these. These are all Bonnie's work, and she did amazing stuff. Some of them are photographs. Some of them are doodles um, that have pictures of tubes and things. So they are just really helpful. This is just one example of Lab 4's material um, that we go through for each lab exercise. So I just, I just love these. The students download these to their computers, and they use them to help prepare. Um, to run through the lab, they use them to help study. So I, I love these materials. Anything you wanted to add about the actual lab exercise PowerPoints, Bonnie? Um, no, not really. I I think you already covered everything. <laughs> so. Do we want to move on to? So I'll move on to uh, universal design. Um, so. Um, my role as a librarian was to kind of come in the end sort of closer to the end and help sort of organize everything and you know uh, Bonhe and Kim had you know privileges in Springshire so they were uploading content and then I was going to go in I was going in and sort of reviewing it behind them um, for some accessibility things and so right off the bat I will admit I am not the most 
I am not the best at this, nor I'm an expert. There's always a learning curve when it comes to making things accessible for everything. There's always new technology to learn. Um, but I thought I'd talk about a little uh, as with about the challenges with the PowerPoints in particular, because you saw on all those slides, there were um, lots of um, pictures and text and labels. So there was a lot of work going in sort of to, to work with the descriptive text and the, the alternate text. Um, and then the other thing you need to watch out in PowerPoints too is reading order. So if a, a, a screen reader would come in behind, is it, reading the heading first or is it reading some random picture first? So there's you need to go in and sort of set the reading order so a screen reader would catch everything in sort of the logical order. And that's a little bit easier to do, say, in Microsoft, um, like a traditional Word document. Um, so with the PowerPoint, I got some extra training from CETL, which is um, our, you know, our teaching and learning center here. Um, so the interesting part of this project for me is, you know, our experts did all the work for the microbiology and and then I came in and I ended up learning a lot about how to make um, PowerPoints and accessible in addition um, to, you know, watching out for color. Um, and again, I'm always learning things and but this was a lot of fun to do and it was a new skill that I've been using in my other classes as well to make sure just everything's a little bit easier for everyone to use if they need it. And then I think we're moving it on on how it all came together. Um, so again, I was kind of um, brought in at the end and we all kind of worked independently and checked in with each and uh, each one another as we needed to. Um, and Kim and Bonnie, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about the content side of things and how you arranged your work. Yeah, actually, beforehand, uh, like uh, before even we um, uh, uh, made the design, like how we are going to start and what are the different requirements, um, Kim and I talked for a long period of time, not not a single day, maybe uh, two, three days uh, about it, like what actually we need need for the microbiology what we have and what else we can do to uh, provide support to our all the teachers or lab coordinators and the students then then we made a plan like or a list uh, like what actually we need and what we we need lots of stops but can we do all these things so um, Ultimately, we, we worked together and we came to a conclusion, okay, so uh, these few things um, that we need, uh, we must have all these things. Um, so we, 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 we made our plan like, okay, so we are going to do these, 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 these things. So that's the uh, pre-application, you know, before even we applied uh, for this uh, project. So we worked on that, like uh, when we came to a conclusion, okay, so what we can do and what we really need to do, we applied. And then um, the next thing was, how are we going to do all these things? Okay, what should be our timeline? Like um, uh, when we can finish it up or how much time it should take. Like, um, I, I think I remember like uh, for pre-lab quizzes uh, for Kim, to make um, almost more than 30 hours. Um, all those things we, we, we sat and we talked together like, okay, so to make uh, 15 pre-lab quizzes, how much time we, we, we really need or, or to make all the lab, um, um, you know, supportive uh, PowerPoints, um, how much time should we, Take. So all this planning, it, it required us at least two or three days of meeting and each meeting went on almost um, one to two hours. Um, so that was the planning period. And then uh, content for the content, uh, we had a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, talking it was going on and on, Kim and I, like, uh, okay, so, uh, like, as I told uh, previously, like, we had to add that uh, milk microbiology. Um, um, students need to do that. Um, 
so how are we are we going to implement that or how are we going to introduce that in the lab so all those plan we did together and um, then uh, uh, after that, uh, the last part was when are we going to implement um, all these things? Um, that was very difficult. Um, like we, we, we made a plan that, uh, okay, so by uh, end of May, we should be done. Uh, but lots of problem came like uh, it was a COVID year um, and we couldn't go to lab and, um, like for me to making that all the 16 supplemental PowerPoint, um, it was very difficult to get all the photos for the supplies or, or all the procedure we actually do, like, 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 you know, like how to hold the tubes, how to uh, hold the caps, because it's microbiology. You cannot uh, put the caps uh, on the table. Simply, we cannot do that. Lots of uh, safety and security issues are there. Um, to, so uh, to show the proper handling, um, it was, it was very important, uh, but we couldn't, we, we did not have access to the lab. Um, uh, we, we couldn't take the uh, picture photos. Um, so I had to draw, uh, you know, for lots of uh, PowerPoints, I had to draw the uh, photos uh, for the, all that. Um, Kim helped me a lot, like serial dilution, lots of things like we, we did it actually together. Like um, she already had a picture for the serial dilution lab uh, she used to use in her lab. Uh, so I actually borrowed that from Kim. Like Kim, can I get that? Um, uh, we are running out of time. So I used that. So basically we all did together, Kim and I, and uh, even, even um, once we are done, like my stops and uh, Kim's stops, we, we went over everything. I asked for suggestion, okay, so Kim tell me how I can improve or Kim also, like we, we, we did it actually uh, together. And then at the end, Betsy helped us a lot. She took, you know, the rest of the uh, whatever it was needed to make it accessible for everything for all. She did that part. Kim, do you want to talk anything? No, I agree. Those were our, some of our difficulties. It was um, we we were organized, we were ready to go, um, but it was really hard to get into the labs um, on in the beginning phase um, when the labs were shut down, and then um, at the end when we wanted to do our semester of implementation and getting yeah. all the data. Um, none of us had a face-to-face -face class and we couldn't do it. Okay. Um, so so we, that was one of our biggest difficulties too, was the whole, ta-da, here it is, and we couldn't do it. Um, but we have since then um, implemented it in the fall and this spring, and it's been going really, really well. well um, yeah. But yeah, pandemic kind of threw a monkey wrench in there for a little bit, um, but it's, it's working really great. <laughs> it's, it's working really great now. All right, and I'll move on to some of our lessons learned. If you all can still see my PowerPoint, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we have um, lessons learned. Time management was super duper important when we were talking about um, planning. Um, we we have these grand ideas, um, but again, the, if we can't get into the lab to take the photographs to build the PowerPoints, um, it was it was difficult. Um, so knowing that there was an extension that we could have filed for an extension, just so y'all know, um, <laughs> in the grants, extensions are a possibility um, that you could, if you needed to, um, file an extension because we were at the end and we needed to show the stuff and we, again, we didn't have a lab to implement this in and so we, we felt kind of stuck there. So time management and the way things fell out um, was a little wonky, um, but it ended up working. It all ended up working out in the end. It was all good. Um, but time management, I think, was one of our lessons learned about that. Um, data management, I believe there was some files lost. Bonnie may have said um, that she lost some data. Um, I'll, let, I'll let you explain that one. Um, <laughs> we still managed to pull it out. Um, but I, I believe Bonnie had managed to to lose some important files that she had. 
Yeah. Um, but even if we lost the files, those doodles that Bonnie made, I think they're great. She's giving herself a hard time about them, but I love her doodles and my students love her doodles um, about the little test tubes and stuff and, and the plates. They work. They work. Um, so the doodles are great, even if we don't have photographs to go along with every single thing that we wanted to. Um, I think it, I still think it turned out really great. And yeah, sometimes simple is better. It doesn't need to be pretty or fancy as long as it, it gets the job done. It does. It does. I know, I know my students appreciated every one of those PowerPoints for the lab exercises. I don't think we talked about the lab prep PowerPoints yet. Do y'all want to talk about those or show yeah. one of those? Okay. So, yeah, Betsy, could you please go back and pull out that one? That, uh... yeah. Or I can, um, I can, I've got one pulled up on my computer if y'all want to see it. Yeah, go ahead, Kim, you choose it and I'll stop sharing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is it too late? Want to share? All right. Can we see it? Yep. Yes, we can see. So these are. We talked about how we have the lab manual, right? We updated our Word document with the lab manual. We made all of these. Bonnie made all of these amazing PowerPoints that go along with each exercise, but we also needed a prep manual to go with our lab manual because our lab prep person was trying to create these things from scratch and she had no idea um, how this was going and what she should prepare for everything. She was trying her best, but we felt like it would be a really great idea to have a whole manual for every single exercise. So this is the one for lab four on that, um, you know, aseptic technique on transfer. And so we have it broken down. Bonnie created these two and they are amazing. You know, what are you gonna put up on the teacher's instructor's desk? Um, what goes there? What are the supplies that the instructor needs on their desk? What goes on the individual lab tables where the students are? What do they need? So those supplies are on here. And then we have a little cart that will go in between the lab and the lab prep area. And so we have items to put on the cart. What do we need for the cart that will go back and forth? between the place um, in between the lab and the prep area. And then we have, um, what do we need to get ready for next time? So do we have different bacteria coming up next week that we need to grow ahead of time? So we have the prep for the next lab is at the very end. So each one of the 16 exercises has a prep for the lab coordinator to prepare and be ready. And so hopefully using these things, um, that instructor just is able to walk in and all the materials are there. The student desks are prepped um, and you can just walk in and, and go to town um, teaching these lab exercises. So I just wanted to show everybody what those were because that was another thing that, that we worked on on the grant bond. He worked really hard on these lab preps and this has made it very, very easy for our lab coordinator to get everything ready um, in preparation for us. Right, I don't know how to close out of that. <laughs> and I that was our last slide. So I think we're we're done if anybody has any questions. Questions for us. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for doing this presentation. Uh, it looks like we're already getting questions in the chat um, from Alessandra Barrera. You showed a campus LibGuide location where the documents were provided publicly. Did you also submit these to the ALG related location too? Yes, they should be. And if they're not, we can fix it. So they are. They are. If you go in and you search for our, our grant, it's got a link. The Galileo is in there um, and it's got a link to it. It, it is definitely in there. I should uh, also say um, these <laughs> are in the Springshire has like a community share section. So if one of your librarians just wants to pull the entire guide so you can all modify it, go ahead and send me an email and I can set, set you up um, with that as well. Um, and I've just added to the chat a, a link to your OpenALG instance. We have another question uh, for that submission. What is one piece of advice you wish you had before you started? Plan for double the time you think it's going to take. <laughs> Like build, build in like all all of like think of all the catastrophes that could happen and just, you know, plan for the worst and hope for the best. So 
Yeah, planning is very, very important. Like um, all the work we do as a uh, professor, you know, like teaching, then taking under, uh, you know, working with the students for undergraduate research. Then on top of that, we have faculty learning community, the reflections and everything. So after all these things, um, you have really little bit of time to work on um, with this ALG grant. So planning is very, very important. You, you really have to be clear about that. Okay, so I have this much time and I need this much time. And when, when I am going to do that one, uh, that needs to be very clear before even you apply for this grant. And that is um, that is something that I think most of our grantees would say is to plan for more time than you think you need. Um, we do our best to cover the time that it takes to do these kinds of projects, but we are, you know, we're limited in funds. And I know that our faculty, our teams, our librarians and instructional designers are very overloaded with work right now. So be realistic when you're estimating your time. Mm -hmm. Yes, don't bite off more than you can chew. Um, we have learned that a few times. Do we have any other questions from our attendees? You're welcome to turn your mic on as well if you'd like. Okay. Uh, hearing and seeing none, do our presenters have anything you guys would like to add before we end? I don't. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, Tiffany. Thanks, Alessandra, for coming. It was nice to have somebody. Well, if you're starting out, too. So. And thank you. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to talk about our grant. Ooh, uh, yes. If you were interested in the pre-lab quizzes, um, I do not put those on the lip guide. I don't put them on the lip guide so the students can just, you know, see them and, and, and um, those are not on the lip guide. So if you want them, please reach out. We've got our contact information. Um, my email, Betsy's email, Bonnie's email is on there. So if you're interested in the pre-lab quizzes, I will happily send them to you. I just don't make them public um, because that kind of defeats the purpose of them. So if they're not on the lip guide. You've got to contact us for us. So please feel free, email me. I will send them to you. Um, and on, on that note, I want to add something like a uh, few few days ago, I got uh, a request uh, to send that uh, um, pre-lab quizzes. And um, uh, I, I think pre for previous grant, we worked on uh, all the, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, course, I, I think we, we worked on the lecture quizzes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I got request to send that, but um, the, the uh, email ID was really suspicious. Um, mm -hmm. I was not sure that I got it from a student or from actual, you know, person who need that. Uh, then, then I didn't send. I asked him that, uh, him or her, I don't know. Um, I asked that, would you please send me an email from your institutional email? Because I really need to know who you are. And uh, then uh, then I did not get any reply back. So make sure when you place and request, make sure uh, that we, we know that who you are. Otherwise, it's very difficult because lots of students, they, they ask for that quizzes too. That I just realized a few days ago. Yeah, we'll do some detective work and make sure that it's a, it's, it's a legitimate instructor. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we um, we're actually working on trying to find a way to set up a good uh, sort of quiz request system that won't require us to manually check that kind of stuff. But we are definitely still in that kind of boat. I do the same thing for my own textbook. Um, I just kind of hunt down their information on their website. Right. Um, so, yeah. OK, um, well, thank you again so much, guys. This was a really great presentation. Um, I am going to go ahead and stop our recording right now. So um, I'll do that.